Welcome to another episode of Behind the Shadows. I'm your host, Harvey Guillen, a.k.a. Guillermo de la Cruz, the show where we talk all things shadows with cast, crew, and celebrity guests. Today's guest is the one, the only, beautiful Parisa Fakri. That's right, Nandor's wife is here. We'll talk late night outings with the cast of Shadows, and Parisa and I give acting tips 101 for an up and coming actor. Don't miss it on today's Behind the Shadows. Breathing is so overwhelming, heartbeats are a hassle. Tell me, why would anyone want to be alive? Death might have a reputation before she arrives But trust me, we have way more fun in the afterlife We have way more fun in the afterlife I am so excited for today's guest. I have the one, the only, Parisa Fakri. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Now, uh, this week's episode was the wedding, uh, which has Mm. been leading up to this big climactic moment. It's like our mid-season, you know, um, big moment. Like this is like a a big episode. Yeah. And I was, well, actually, before joining the cast, were you a fan of the show? Were you aware of the show? Yes, I had seen the movie and I had seen the first two ep- two seasons. I hadn't seen the third season yet. How was that? Yeah. Like, how was the audition process? Like when you heard about it, how did the whole thing come to be? I literally told my manager, I'm going to cry if I get it. I'm going to cry if I don't. <laughs> 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 so I was like, I don't know. It was crazy. Um, yeah, I was very, 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 very excited. Was it like one time to call back? Was it like a tape sent? Like, how was that? It was just a tape sent. And um, I'll tell you, it's funny because I had, I'll tell this is something for me and you later. But um, yeah, so it was just (laughs) a tape sent. And then like a week passed and it was like, you know, and then it came back and forth. And then all of a sudden it was like, hey, they're getting approval from the network for you. And I was like, Oh my God, (laughs) like it couldn't, it couldn't go fast enough. You know, like 24 (laughs) hours was just like, I'm going to like a cat on a ceiling or something, you know? (laughs) Don't you hate that as an actor? Sometimes that waiting game of like, you're sitting, you're waiting, you know, you're almost there. You have the threshold. There's nothing more excruciating for an actor than to be on hold. Right? Am I right? Like, do you have any stories? Like, do you have any stories like that? (laughs) Well, I was on hold for a month and a half pinned for For this. Oh, for those projects? No, no, for for some years ago, and um, I didn't get it. Um, But But that month and a half was so crucial. It's so like intense. But they like called every couple weeks, just making sure she's still available, and that was even more torturous because you're like, I got this, right? Like I got this, and then I'm the one. (laughs) No, no, didn't didn't got this. I was on hold one time for my first series regular um, for about three months on hold for this. What? Yeah, it was like intense. Like it was like a huge. I like, lost my the, mind. The audition process was going over the late summer into the fall. It was intense. And I just remember it was the most excruciating part of being an actor. And, I, and at one point I was like, I, I don't know if I can do this all the time. I don't know if I can just be waiting and waiting and waiting. It's and then, the hardest part. It's the hardest part. It's the sit around and wait. That's the hardest part. Um, and that's why it's good to like distract yourself with other things and other projects or sure. family and friends and all that, because it can, I can see why people leave the business. You know, I, I, I can honestly, <laughs> yeah. I, saw, I had a friend who was so talented in high school, like, you know, amazing actor and et cetera, et cetera. They went to one audition. They didn't get a callback and they were heartbroken and they quit. What? They went to one audition one audition one audition and i think because they don't you know what it is is they don't teach that in school because in school you know depending where you go you're always given a part you know what i mean like you're always like yeah you're gonna be the blah 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 you're gonna be the tree you're gonna be the tree yeah everyone gets a trophy and and in the real world there's no room no one not everyone gets a trophy and so it's hard when people say you don't want me and it's like yeah no well not this time good job but not this time I don't understand. You don't want me. And but they, look at me. Look Did at you me. What are you talking about? Look at me. Don't you want this face? 
I, I auditioned with this face. I hope you know that. <laughs> but he's sad. I hope you know that I audition with this face all the time. Look at me. Oh, it's so natural. I understand why you would do that. Thank you. It's organic chicken fat on my lips. <laughs> I've had I, a rat I, face that I do since I was a kid. And my friends, every time I do it, they're like, can you please just stop? I don't want to see that. Oh, my God. Is that the rat I face you just did? Did you just no. do that? No, you won't do it. Oh, that's oh my God. You know, I was, like gonna, I was just going to say when you tried to do a face before that, I was like, you're so beautiful that it, it just didn't come across. <laughs> and oh, you're so God. beautiful. I can make some. I can uh, make some. Oh, maybe yeah. Thank you. You're kind. But but it took a lot of energy. I saw there was a lot of muscles going into that work because it's not natural. <laughs> it is not natural for you to fall into an ugly oh, face. Yeah. And so that I is mean, work. I can say the same for you, Harvey. Oh, no. I always say. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you. you. I, adorable oh you're sweet thank you Perfect but I, skin. I drop my skin yeah. routine um but <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get sponsored by some kind of like face cream or whatnot perfect uh perfect but it's um but it's true like the the whole thing you know with auditioning and actors and all that it's it's crazy but i'm so glad that you joined the cast because marwa has become such you know part of our family and it's just uh <laughs> And it's so funny because the way you play her is so different. I mean, this is a credit to you as an actress that you're so good that like, it's so different. It's like, it's totally different. Like the mannerisms and the way the, the voice and, and how would you, how would you describe how you get into character for Marwa? Well, I'll just give you one little funny thing first. When I first got the audition sides, I read them once and I got my phone and I turned the camera on me and I went, you know what? I changed my mind. And it was like, <laughs> that's just, it's like I knew what it was going to be. And I think she, I guess at this point, people, you know, know that she's kind of changing here. So I think there's just kind of this like shell type right. of thing that's happening. So I just tap into it with, it's really that line. It's funny. It always got me there when I needed to get, that, you know, just to be kind of like uh, lobotomized, I guess. <laughs> you know, isn't that crazy? Like, it's just it, it only takes that one line that lets you fall into yeah. place as an actor. I think I remember Guillermo's like in the audition, and his line was um, just like very cool, master, and just the submissiveness of that, and just yeah. very like supportive of your capture basically you know what i mean and uh stockholm yeah. syndrome and how to and when that line just came out i remember just being like oh this is him this is totally him you know he could still see the 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 silver lining in a situation that's very terrible <laughs> <laughs> yes for sure for sure i mean yeah uh, uh Guillermo, um deals with a lot <laughs> a lot and this season i must say i really love the moment that you know most of the fans were you know uh combative about like well no nandor is supposed to end up with gear and i was like don't you see that like if you really truly love someone you want them to be happy and yeah guillermo really shows that with nandor in this moment they had a really sweet moment in the in the episode where they are you know getting him ready he's nervous if he's making the right choice and and there's never any negative energy shown between guillermo and marwa if anything there's encouragement when he walks you no, up to the, yeah do you remember that yes and when we have our little moment at the table yes 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 <laughs> oh like my god my favorite things to shoot Re too. refresh <laughs> everyone's memory tell everyone about that moment and i'll tell them about the other one so it's um, when when you're sitting there listening to the band and I come over and I just wanted to tell you how much I love you and how much I appreciate you. And um, and then I try to make you do things you don't want to like, let's go with this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so um, sweet. So, yeah. It's such a sweet moment with Marwa. And, and the moment that, you know, when he whispers in her ear, when he's helping her with her dress up to, mm. you know, the actual um, pedestal, I guess you will, for the wedding. Uh, what is that yeah. platform called? The stage, I mean, the yeah. The stage, the altar, the but altar. The al yeah, the altar kind the of. The altar, yeah, the yeah. altar. And so I'm yeah. helping her up because she's a gorgeous gown and I'm carrying like the back of it. And and as you come up and I make sure you get up and I just whisper in your, and I can't believe they, they actually got this. I don't think it was in the script. I think it was out at the last minute, but I lean over your ear and I go like, you look beautiful. You know, <laughs> just like a yeah. reminder of like. I remember then, that. 
it's such a sweet moment. I'm really glad that they kept that in because it really does show that you could love people and want the best for them. It doesn't mean necessarily that it ends up in a physical, you know, connection or, um, or whatnot. Sure. And, and I love that. And I love that, that we show that this season. Now, does he have a, you know, some kind of deeper feeling for Nandor? I, I don't know. You know, only time will tell because apparently mm -hmm. after, you know, the episode, it took him this long to find out you know, or want the perfect wife. And at the end, he was forcing himself to build a perfect wife with Marwa, you know, and right. I like that Marwa starts getting, you know, kind of a kind of a backbone and just like, you know what I mean? Because it's just like a controlled vessel, but it's also like, wait a minute. And she starts spending with the girls night out, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. That was hilarious. <laughs> what were you guys watching? It was a uh, it was Mamma Mia. Uh, <laughs> Mamma Mia. And that was like the second day of shooting. And, you know, it's like, I don't know anybody. And I'm like, oh, so I get to come in and just be a complete jackass <laughs> for the first time here. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, that's a funny one. We have way more fun in the afterlife. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Throughout my personal journey and professional career, life has had its fair share of tricks and treats. I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have access to therapy to help me through those tricky experiences. BetterHelp has made therapy accessible. BetterHelp Online Therapy will assess your needs and can match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. If you ever considered therapy but thought getting started was too complicated or expensive, I assure you it's worth it. And BetterHelp takes all the stress away. You can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you don't have to be on camera if you don't want to. And getting therapy every week is as easy as a few clicks on your laptop or phone. So many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional therapies in all 50 states. And they have a special offer for my listeners. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Shadows Podcast. That's 10% off your first month of online therapy at BetterHelp.com slash Shadows Podcast. Now back to the show. How is it? How is it working with Kristen and Natasha? Oh, my gosh, it was like it. It was amazing, but also I'll say this with all of you, mother truckers. I was like, <laughs> curse, how am I not? You <laughs> okay, these motherfuckers, how am I going to not laugh? How am I going to keep a straight face? And I'm like, I'm going to be such the amateur. And then I remember reading an article about the show on the flight out for my first flight out there. And it says that you guys all cracked up. And I was like, hey, you know what? It's like they do it too but you know being a newbie you're like i don't want to ruin this take <laughs> that's so funny because we just had a noob on the show who plays the gene on the show and he yes. was saying the same thing that people get into a set because you're so used to a program as an actor when you get to the set you you like scope out the situation like what's the vibe on this set like there's no silly you know silliness there's no funny business there's just go st do your lines and get out or is it like we have fun or like so it's it makes sense that actors will scope out you know, the environment because you are coming into For a sure. family or a train already in motion. And that could have gone yes. south, you know, if you get into the situation and we're like, we don't joke around, you know, <laughs> we take this. We don't, we're very serious. We're very serious on this show. Hi, Art. Uh, hi, Art, all right? <laughs> hi, dick jokes and fart jokes in this show. <laughs> So yes. it's crazy to think that, but you're right. It's I I've, I do it all the time. You get to a set and you're like, oh, okay. I know not to, you know, like piss that person yeah. off or whatnot. And it's crazy. Yeah. But it, like the wedding episode is so beautiful and just like it takes place obviously at the club and everyone's there and 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 it really just show emotions from all all the characters and every, what everyone's going through yeah. and the 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 butterflies that you know you have uh, for Marwa going into this uh, even though she's been uh, with Nandor before it's like the chosen one you know it's like the chosen yeah. one out of all the wives and also the uns uncertainty that Nandor has in this episode and also the expiration date coming approaching Guillermo because of the, he promised to stay as long as he could help find him a wife. Him a wife, yeah. And expiration is here. And so now it's like, because remember, they still did him dirty. And he's he hasn't forgotten. Yep. No, you know? he's not forgotten. I'm curious <laughs> to see what happens later with 
Guillermo. <laughs> Later this season, you'll find out. Uh, but <laughs> speaking of dating and weddings and whatnot, have you uh, ever had a horrible like date? Or you've been lucky enough to be like, no, they've all been great. <laughs> I think they've been pretty. I mean, okay, let me. I, I don't. I haven't dated a lot. I've had either I was in a relationship and you meet somebody and it goes zero to a hundred and like a week and then you're together for five years. Um, so I haven't really had many dates, um, but I've heard some really good ones from my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you share without sharing names? Of course. Can you share maybe one? Yes. Okay. So my friend was dating this guy and they went out a few times and then he, after like, I think it was like the fourth date or something. He was like, do you want to go back to my house? And, you know, we can have a drink and, you know, watch a movie or something like that. And she was like, sure. <laughs> they get to the house, to the apartment and it's, his bed is in the living room. Oh. And he has three other roommates. <laughs> what? what? Wait. His, his bedroom was the living room. Okay. And she was, I go, girl, did you run? She goes, I said, so she said, I left something in my car. I have to go get it and left and never came back. <laughs> oh my God. That's, I mean, at that point, I get it. You know, times are hard. You got to, like, you know, the economy, inflation, people got to bunk up and have roommates and whatnot. <laughs> But at that point, don't you think that if you go on a date, you kind of, I don't know, if you're, if you're, if you're the one who got the living room, maybe that's the one night that you're like, I'm going to go date. And if I am going to go and invite this person over, maybe like, I don't know, because then is that, would, is that, is that sleazy to be like, I well, why go hotel? I wouldn't invite a person over. I'd be like, no, exactly. let's wait till the second date. Yeah. And then if that means we're going to, you know, Netflix and chill, or we can rent a hotel or something, you know, something, right? Go like, to your place. Yeah. Let's go to your place. It let's, was. That sounds Hey, you know rude. what? I have roommates. Let's go to your place. Just didn't no. even phase him that his bed was in the middle of the living room. No. <laughs> that <laughs> blows my mind. Like, well, oh, like, so, okay. Too. So did you give her any dating advice? What's When someone asks for dating advice, it's always funny because I feel like I have all the answers to give to someone else, but not myself. And so, like, when yeah. I give someone, I'm like, you should do this. And no, 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 you're too good for them. Da, 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 da. And then when it comes to me, I'm like, what do I do? They do. <laughs> well, I think it's like, I feel the same too. Like, all of my, like, we all give each other advice and stuff like that. But definitely, you can see others so much more, with so much more clarity than you can see yourself. And I feel like it's been years and years and years. I've, I have learned from everybody that I have dated and I've picked the good parts. So that's, you know, like I, I t got those things. But like, I feel like with, uh, with when it comes to you yourself, we are such flawed human beings that like, I have to like go, this is what I need to work on. And this is what I need to work on. And I work on those things. So I'm not a good judge of things when it comes to like how I'm supposed to react to something because I'm still working on those things. But for other people, you're like, no, oh, you're amazing. Fuck him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Why we? It's, it's like I give the best advice as, you know, a third party. And then it's just like, what do I do? You know, and it's just like, it yep. blows my mind. Take your own advice, I guess. But it's also like, would you take your own advice all the time? And I think that's the question I think most people don't ask themselves. Are you giving advice that you would take yourself? You know, because well, I feel like. Well, we're emotionally attached at that point. So that's right. what I was saying. It's like, it's hard to give yourself advice when you're. You're, you know, you're, you're clouded. In that way. Yeah. Yeah. You're clouded with, uh, you know, I was just watching um, 90 Day Fiance, the show. <laughs> And the I idea did. that like these shows where like people fall in love and spin over somebody so much that they want to believe like this one guy. Oh, is who, it a reality show? It's a reality show. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, they, okay. and they, they fly over to like Peru and they never even FaceTime with this person. They're like, I know we're connected and she's the one. And I was like, oh no. And then they show up and they're not there. I think they're being catfish, but they're like, no, I'll give it one more try. I'm going to stay here for a couple of days. And it's like, I think they're not there they're not the real person this picture looks beautiful i just don't think it's them and you'll just convince yourself you'll convince yourself of whatever you want because you want it so bad once you're in it you know once you're in love you 
you know, you put up with stuff that you shouldn't and, and, and people do that all the time. So yeah, I, I think that's good advice though. <laughs> it's like, don't take your own advice here. At their listen party. to your friends. <laughs> listen to your friends. That is a good What's advice. Your dating advice. Listen to your friends. Listen to your friends. Advice. Yeah. The smart ones. The smart ones. Yeah. Uh, with yeah. a good track record, I guess they have to get, they should have a good track record, right? Not all sure. the time, I guess. Sometimes, I mean, some of the people I've gotten the best advice from, when you look at their, like, they're like, they just don't want to, like, be in a relationship or commit, but they have stories and they have, I think with experience comes, you know, knowledge and you can yep. speak from knowledge. You know, you can say like, well, sure. back in college, I used to date this one, you know, and it's like, that's a story. Yeah. That's an experience. You can share that. But yeah, it's so hard. Anyways, going back to the show, uh, you, this yep. show is so full of like, Beautiful sets, as you got to see. What was the one set oh. that you were just like, uh, like blown away by? That's a really hard question, Harvey, because <laughs> the house itself, the rooms are like, they're just so thoughtfully trashed, you know? But then the um, Naja's Club is oh, uh, yeah. just pretty fit and then then the, the attached room the uh room of oddities right mm -hmm. isn't that what it the was chamber, before? chamber of curiosities cha chamber of curiosities thank you and that converted one with the lights on the ceiling i am i was blown away by everybody on this production from costume designers to hair and makeup to you know art department everybody everybody was so impressive because you're just like holy shit everybody's so good at what they do you know? It's insane. They are. I mean, Laura it's Montgomery, insane. who does the costumes, who yes, she's you know, incredible, incredible, just got nominated for an Emmy, and it's just it, she it, did. It, she did. That's so yes. amazing! Congrats, Laura. It's so great, and um, it's just like it blows my mind because she goes the extra mile. Like some of those costumes, like like Nandor's like outfit is like handmade from scratch from sketch from mm -hmm. beginning to end and she goes out of the way to really kind of find pieces that would be appropriate uh for the region uh culturally appropriate like all of that time yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's very important and so it's just like it blows my mind to like I can't and you came in during a time where the set had been trashed like you said because yeah. a year of neglect had taken over and right, so right. there was trees and vines growing in through the house <laughs> and so the house is not the way that it normally is which is like aged decaying chic <laughs> right 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 like yeah. normal normal dusty, dusty creepy uh morbid this was like another layer where you know yeah the the panels on the floor were open you could fall through there's a giant yeah, tree like an upside one yeah yeah the trying tree that fell into the fancy room there's just vines everywhere natasha's wig would get caught on like branches <laughs> the like, raccoons. In the, there's <laughs> raccoons running around so you came yeah. in the middle of a renovation of not only you know the house being trash but nausea's um or the curiosity chambers being turned into a nausea's club and so you came yeah. into in a moment of transition which is so yeah. i guess uh you know very fitting for this season because everyone's yeah. going through transition. transitioning a bit yeah yeah for sure. it's so weird that you came in and and saw that because it's like i i always see people see the original set and then not a lot of people got to see this version of the set because it was only for this season and so, I'm so excited I got to yeah. see it because it was so rad. It was so, so rad. We have way more fun in the afterlife. If you haven't heard already, it's smooth sack summer. That's right. This is the summer to keep your balls cool while still looking hot with Manscaped. The leader in below the belt grooming is making sure we all have a ball this summer by giving our pants partners everything they need to stay fresh. Dive head first into smooth sack summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with our code SHADOWS. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to prepare that summer body. Inside this package, you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver, ball deodorant, crop revival toner performance boxer briefs and a travel bag to hold your goodies did i mention this trimmer is waterproof too beach lake or shower this razor will devour even the strongest eternal pubes get 20 percent off plus free shipping with code shadows manscaped.com that's 20 percent plus free shipping with code shadows at manscaped.com it's smooth sack summer boys get on board or get left behind 
Can I give everybody one little tidbit of information? Props yeah. to costume to Laura with, with my wedding dress. So that wedding dress was all white. Ah. Everything else was done by the costumers. All of the gold was added. They made the little gold bolero and everything, and it weighed about 65 pounds. It was but, heavy. Yeah. It but I heavy. mean, oh my God, they did such an incredible job on that dress. And you did it with such grace, too, because it was just like, even walking up, even when I was helping with the end of it, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I was like, how is, how is Patty so, like, falling? Like, how is she not falling over? <laughs> this is so heavy. <laughs> I weigh 105 pounds. I'm like, yeah. yeah. You were literally like, yeah. I think, I think the garment absolutely weighed more than you. And you were like, such grace. You were just like, Audrey Aww, Hepburn, thank like, you. walking up the, and meanwhile, I'm like, with your train, I'm like, ah. And it's just like it's so heavy but it looked beautiful it looked stunning Thank on camera you. it looked beautiful in pictures and yeah those like it was just amazing to be oh, on yeah. set with such a crew and and everyone if you if you could or maybe you did if you could if something could magically disappear from any of the sets what would it be and why from the sets Oh, people always say they're like, oh, I wish I could take that painting or I wish I could this. Uh oh, like if I could take something. Yes. There was um, um, a piece in the in what, what, Nandor's little gold cave. <laughs> Yo, oh, yeah. His, his uh, was in the attic or the basement, the base. It was the basement, the, the one basement. where you and um, the gin were negotiating. That's right. It was a secret beds. door yes. that led from his bedroom. Mm -hmm to yep. a private dungeon basement. Yeah. Yes. There was a, a really cool um, sword that I was like, oh my God, that'd be so cool to have that. <laughs> it reminded me of something that I'd seen in like a, as a family heirloom in Iran back in the day when I, when I had visited Iran. Um, so, but, but that's also goes to show you how like authentic every, like they tried to like, they keep everything so authentic and real. You know what I mean? That blows my mind. Like it actually looks so good. They, it, brought up that memory back from you yeah wow yeah i had no because idea because my because mm -hmm, it was like from my grandfather's grandpa like I, it was just a old 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 sword and it reminded me of that and i was like oh that'd be cool if i could have that <laughs> <laughs> not that i'm gonna do anything with a sword but you I mean, know maybe ask you questions at customs or something when you try to put it in your duffel bag or something you're like sorry it's just excuse uh, me Sorry, it's just uh, yeah, it's a prop. Uh, they do such a great, yeah, great job. I always think about my 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 answer always changes just because there's so many things that change every season. And I think the latest one was, um, I think I just keep saying that I should just probably ask if I can grab it. It's an old Disneyland calendar or or map that was inside the fancy room, uh, or no, not the, the the library, not the fancy room that was inside uh one of the books and the shelves like it was just like a and there was a oh they like, would totally let you have that right but i was just like i but for a part of me wants to like leave it and be like somebody make a story out of this like you know maybe sarah naftalis or or you know or paul or somebody i was like somebody make a story yeah. out of this it's the reason why we have it right like somebody make a story was it an old map it was like 1971 oh <gasps> that's yeah. awesome it was like an oh, older map. That. And I was like, but my question was like, how did it end up here in the house? Like, that's such a cool how story. How random. Yeah. yeah like it's the just journey like, of it getting there. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I From don't know. From thrift store yeah. to bookstore to thrift store to bookstore. It's just insane. I, I, I keep thinking about it all the time. I think I'm just going to ask for it. And be like, can I just have that map? No one's going to miss it. I found You should. It. Whenever you I guys should. wrap. Yeah. <laughs> seven, just do it, right? Seventh season, yeah. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, Eighth I'll just season, ask for ninth, it. whatever. Whatever. Yeah. I'll just wait yeah. till then and it'll, it'll be more vintage by then. So that's yeah, what I'm gonna do. It'll just gotten older and older and lovelier. Yeah. With the characters of like not uh, with Nandor and Marwa, what do you think their first date was like? I think it was probably um me complimenting Nandor and <laughs> telling him how amazing he used to be and is, and is. <laughs> um and probably preparing him um you know some blood and feeding him that way <laughs> <laughs> no but wait if if your was your first day when when he was human and 
You mm. were still human yourself and not You're a talking about when we were human. We were human. Oh. Yeah, because then that would be the different version of right. Marwa where this Marwa is like a shell of herself coming into right. the, the control of Nandor and, and the gene who's gotcha. brought, him, brought her back to life. So if it was our first date, then it would be dates really didn't exist in in El Conador back in the day. <laughs> El Conador. <laughs> El Conador. Um, probably would be me cooking a meal for him and um, rubbing his shoulders and making him feel like the um, warrior that he was. The warrior. The man mm -hmm. of the house. Is that traditionally, I feel like that's culturally like, uh, when I think of like my culture and like how that's usually like, yeah, you're, if you're going on a date and it's a hetero relationship and it's going with female and male, the woman has to show how she would make a good partner and a good wife and a good um, uh, provide a good home. I mean, and not cook. not anymore, but yes, back in the yeah. day for sure. You yeah. know, because yeah. I mean, there was such a, such a patriarchy, and you have to be a deserving woman and be able to cook and clean and blah blah blah. blah. And now it's yeah. like. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Which I it's love. Funny, my parents have, <laughs> yes. I mean, my parents are, I love my parents' relationship because, like, they cook together. They both cook. My dad does most of the grocery shopping. Um, like, and if they're having people over a party or whatever, they'll, um, you know, my mom's usually like, okay, with 30 people or whatever. And he goes to the store, no jokes. He'll go like four or five times. To and the then store? He's like, yeah, and then she'll he'll be like she'll be like I need some cilantro, and he's like okay, so that's it, right? You didn't forget anything else? No, 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 I didn't forget anything else. She he goes to the store, comes back with cilantro, like he'll buy like four cilantros instead of just two. <laughs> he's like I got it all, and then she's like I'm so sorry, Abastin, you have to go get. It. I need pears and I need apple, and I and it's like <laughs> woman, this man is just going back and forth. He does it. He doesn't complain. He's awesome. Oh, that's a good dad and a good husband. That's yes, great. Yes, for sure. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think I have stories similar to that. We have very similar upbringing with our cultures, I guess. My dad would do the same thing with my mom, would literally send dad to like the grocery store at least twice and come back. And if, but it was always like not being specific on the things. And it was always like really my mom that didn't give the specific on the instruction, I guess, because she tried to like send my sibling and they would come back with like, instead of cilantro, it would be like, <laughs> oregano or something you know what i mean like it was like that's not the, <laughs> yeah that's not it that's not the or same. parsley or something it's like that's not it that's not cilantro you know you know what cilantro is and then like eventually very different my, very different it makes the food taste very different and mm -hmm. i remember just eventually be my dad who have to be uh the the savior and be like i'll go get it it's just like yeah but See, um, that's amazing yeah it's just, uh, some men are not like that no, a lot still, of men are not like that yeah still to this day i mean yeah it's unfortunate um but yeah, it's it's so funny. What would you think uh, would be a dish that would be served while Nandor was alive and human, and Marwa and him uh, were were married? What would be a, a traditional dish they think could be served and and he would like? I think I would say lamb with dill rice. Ooh, he seems like the kind of man that would like that. Yeah, and they and the, they also have giant lima beans in them. Yeah, that would be it. That's so funny. That's good. That sounds really. I don't think I've ever had that. That sounds the delicious. Lamb, like, fall, the way my my family makes it, it's like falls off the bone, <sighs> and it's it's really good. I don't that's have so lamb good. anymore, but yes. Oh, that's <laughs> right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> I mean, once in a remember while, remember that one time we ate octopus, and I was like, it makes me really sad to eat octopus. <laughs> I know, I feel so guilty. So we oh, hung no. out. I mean, it's true oh, yeah. though, because after that, I've like, you know, it was just like I couldn't. I was just like, it, it's, it's, yeah. We were hanging out in Toronto. We went, we walked into this uh, restaurant slash bar in the middle of College Street, and they were closing. And I think we got early out that day for some miracle. We were all out early, pretty early in, in our sense, because we usually shoot nights and you know late into nights and yeah. we're, we remember we, we we wrapped like around maybe nine and then yeah, we were like that's should exactly we, it should we get like dinner and it was cave on and matt barry and you and i and we're like mm -hmm. where should we go and then i think it was matt who recommended he's like college street because we uh we wanted to go to uh mrs robinson which is on college yes, street, but they were and it was closed. closed yeah yeah mm -hmm. so we got there and we were like oh no 
And then we were like, and I looked across the street and it was like this tapas kind of place. And I was like, oh, we could just go there and have, it was you know, so buy. good. It was so good. I was, was really, I, really I good. don't remember the name of it. <laughs> it was, do you? I, I don't, don't either. I don't I remember. Don't. They were lovely. They showed us no, that right. little, that dining room too. Oh, that yeah. Was great. Yeah. They were so lovely. They were so excited to see you guys. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, the cast of shadows. Is here. Oh yeah. I that I remember happens that. all the time to you guys. I bet it's, it's crazy. Cause you, well, yeah, like, you know, if you go by yourself, I feel like once in a while you'll get someone who's like, you know, I was uh, in Atlanta and we're hanging out with the cast of, um, of Blue Beetle there. We went out for a night out and went to this bar and I was waiting at the bar to get a drink. And then the bartender was busy, 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 busy. And then she looked over and she went <sighs> and she just like gasped. And I was like, ah, and I was just like, what? And then she was like, hello, what can I get? What can I get? And, and then I was like, and it was pretty loud in there. I was like, oh, hi. And then whatever the order was. Uh, and I was getting drinks for us. So I was just like, um, and we're there with the cast and crew. So I was getting like a round for us, you know, for everyone. And then uh, I had to like scream. And I was like, oh, can I get four more? Like screaming it. And then she got the order. And then eventually after the order, she was like, by the way, I love your work. <laughs> She's like screaming. <laughs> I like how you gasped. You're like, oh. We have way more fun in the afterlife. And, you know, you got to remember the show uh, kind of premiered during a crazy time. Our season two was yeah. that the, at the beginning of a, pa a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic. So yeah. we, we haven't really been out and about for about three seasons. So three of our show of seasons have been right, during a crazy right. time. And so we just now, you know, we just went to Comic-Con, uh, which was amazing. And we're, we're just now, oh, you know, cool. getting to the vibe of things and 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 people watching the show because they we get to hear from them they usually can send like you know they'll they'll tag you on something on instagram or or you know post something oh, i follow you on instagram and i love <laughs> all the fan art with you guys isn't that I crazy mean, it's so good it's so good and i love it all but i love that everybody really wants you and nandor to have the love affair and it's so <laughs> sweet um it's not nadermo that's what they call it Nadirma. Yeah, Nadirma. It's Nadirma. yeah, it's really it's pretty fantastic. I, I think it, it I have to say it's very well deserving all of the love you guys get because I mean so funny. I, I mean, I was so intimidated and scared and nervous and it, it and rightfully so because you guys just I mean, I'm I'm gonna stop gushing, but you guys are no. so good. You I yeah. mean, and we only let good people join the troops so that is a credit to you and how amazing you are okay. you outbeat how many wives to be marwa you know <laughs> i think there's only like three so <laughs> only three people audition <laughs> hey that's still i always think whenever you get a part as an actor don't you feel like you kind of win like a small like lottery because you outbeat people oh, oh who, it is it is right it's like winning the lottery yeah. for me every time i get a gig and i'm like oh yes i got it and then and of course, those days when you're a uh, hold on, you're on hold for a month and then you don't get it. It's like, no, the ticket. I had the golden ticket in my hand. I had it in my hand. This close. You're like, this close. This close. And then it's gone. You and you're think like, about it, like 700 people, a thousand people to send in a tape or whatever. And for you to get like when you were on hold for three months, you're like, well, you got it. But I would did not like uh, it. But there's the, for the one I got, you don't see like the sure. Hundreds. There's a the hundreds that yeah. we didn't get, of course, and because of course. we don't promote those. But doesn't it make you feel good that even to get it to the door, you know, at the cusp of you know, and you're with the ticket, and even if you don't get it, I always I've gotten to the point that I just tell myself, well, it was just it was their turn, and there was it was it all happens for a reason. But you were at the threshold. You were welcome to the threshold to yeah. come in, almost come in, and, and now they know who you are. I always say that you want to win. You want to obviously get the part and book the part, but what you really want to do is book the room, like book the room because yeah. I've gone in for auditions where it's not right for me. It's not written for me that way. It's not written. Everything's not in my favor. So I go in and I do it my way. I mean, Guillermo was one of those. I was not right for Guillermo. He was 20 I, years older. And I, I think I remember you telling me it's such an incredible story. So it just goes to show that like, if you think, if you think you could bring this character to life, then go for it. Even if you don't get it, you'll never regret not, going for it because if you don't go for, for it sure. it's when you regret it you're like ah, you know what like i should have just done it i should have just done it and they, what's the worst they could say no okay they say no, no. okay 
move on to the next. I've heard that before. <laughs> I've heard that plenty of times. Well, you know yeah. that most actors will hear n- more no's in one week than an average person will hear in a lifetime because you go about oh, yeah. three auditions, five auditions if you're lucky, and you get maybe three callbacks and maybe one, uh, you know, get on hold or a producer session and then you don't get it. So that's already, mm-hmm. you know, five no's in one week. And most people will sh- shift careers like in a lifetime maybe they'll i'll grow a job when they start in their 20s They're like i don't like this i'm going to move into this position and they move to a second one or a third one but that's a, that's about the average like three moves in a lifespan for like the average person but for us it's we're always putting on like this character for this week for two months for five years and it's weird to put on you know that you're like constantly like just moving and, and and your life as an actor is just like go 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 and you can't really kind of hold precious to one thing because you hear so many no's you're going to be disappointed if you do you know yeah i mean everybody that i you know that i know you know that i've known for a really long time they obviously know i'm an actor and they're like i just don't understand how you you guys constantly get rejected and i'm like there comes a point where you just don't you know it's not about you mm-hmm. anymore you know, you, you've got, like you said, when you get that close, it's almost a win. So it's kind of like, okay, this is good. But um, I think we just get so used to it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's not you about me to. anymore. Cause like, you know, that you're, you're, you've got, you know, you've got talent, you're working, you've done, you know, so like, it's just like, okay, maybe I remind them of their ex-wife or ex-girlfriend yeah. or something, you know, or, or maybe they wanted somebody completely different and it, it is what it is. And I think there's a, it would, you know, we're gonna spread, spread, spread the work around, you know. Yeah, and it's out of our control. So at that moment, you know, it was because you didn't have the right hair color, or you weren't too, the other a lead or actor in your scene is uh, has to be this height. So you have to be as a. It yeah. comes down to the 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 most stupid and mundane so many things. things. That you're like, I don't, I can't control that. What I can control is leaving an impression, and then maybe you'll remember that next time. And you know, for the most part, I feel like. They will, you know, so it's always good. So yeah, that's good tips. And those have been our tips <laughs> from Harvey and Patty. Those are our acting tips. <laughs> those are acting <laughs> tips from Patty and Harvey, you guys. Um, before we go, I want to ask you at Naja's, there's obviously, you know, uh, blood cocktails. But if you, uh, Parisa and also Marwa had their own cocktail at the bar, what do you think it would be called? And what would be, uh, what would it consist of? Why would you not give me time to think about this? <laughs> Cut you on your toes. Um, well, it's a really, really interesting question. I'm just going to go. This is so bad because if it's Parissa and Marwa mixed together, right? Yeah, I mean, you, c- you can separate them. And then, staying, and then staying thematically with Naja's, I would say it is red wine with ice cubes served with a straw. <laughs> Wait, is that yours or, <laughs> or Marwa's? Mine is just the red wine. Marwa would want ice cubes and a straw because <laughs> I feel like back when she was alive, really alive, there was no ice cubes. <laughs> I love that. Okay, that's good for Naja's. That's just for Naja's and because it's a vampire, uh, you know, clientele. What if yeah. what if Naja's um we just actually had a mini Naja's at Comic Con. And what if Naja's was for human, regular human people? What would your cocktail be and what would it be called? So I could have anything. I would have a, uh, what if we have, okay, what, what would it be fun with, to have a fireball? Oh, like would it be like you know? a cute little shot? No, they're like, it's those, those drinks that it's like, um, it's like you put like uh, it's, is I it just like, went to like fireball like a you, shot. <laughs> no, but that is a shot too. But that's the name of it. But it's like it's like uh, rumplements and um, it sounds so disgusting and like soda or something like that. And then you like put a little topper of Cointreau on top of it and you light it on fire. Ooh, Remember you used to yeah. like do that? Weird yeah, thing? yeah, that's what I mean. Fireball. I don't know why, but the it just still seems like thematically like nausea's and. Cause she's yeah. so grand you and know? it's, it's like a show. Like it's a nice little yeah. presentation. I like that. Yeah. Ooh, yes. Okay. Sign me up. I'll take one. <laughs> and would it be still called fireball? Or would you call it something else? No, I just made that name up. Cause we you did it on fire. Okay. Great. Yeah, but fireball, fireball is a shot. I'm from I Texas. Know. <laughs> so I know fireball is disgusting. I, I think we should call it the, the Parisa fireball. 
The yeah. Marwa Fireball. The Marwa Fireball. Okay. <laughs> I love that. I guess that. it would be funny. So, yeah. <laughs> That's Depending funny. on what night. Like, yes. And you sprung that on me. I was like, oh, God, how am I going to think Sorry. of that? I'm such a boring drinker now. I'm like, beer or wine? That's pretty good. I like the, the aesthetic of that <laughs> and the visual. So I, I could see that at a bar, actually. Right. So, right. but. I want to thank you so much, Parisa, for joining us today. The fans have been loving you on the show so much. Uh, thank you for for showing your talent and coming on to the show and playing with us. We are so grateful to have you here and on What We I'm, Do in the Shadows. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being such a lovely, giving actor. And that goes for everybody on the show. But thank you so much because you guys, you made it so fun and funny and comfortable. And thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Um, and so if you want to say anything to the fans out there who are listening, because I feel like we're going to see some Marwa cosplay uh, because uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, you know, Halloween's around the corner and I feel like it's going to happen. So what uh, what kind of advice do you want to give to any of the fans out there who, are, who stand Marwa and Nandor or who just love Marwa in general? What do you want to tell them? Well, I just want you guys all to know that my Marwa's love is true for Nandor so true and if you uh if you like the way marwa dresses just go go find the weirdest thing you can find and put it on <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it thanks so much for joining us uh, we'll see you all next time bye thank you bye you guys <laughs> Behind the Shadows is a production of Straw Hut Media, hosted by Harvey Guillen, produced by Ryan Tillotson, Amada Sanchez, and Tyler Nielsen. Original music by Trevor Bumgar and Chris Hendricks, vocals by Maggie Glass. If you don't already, subscribe wherever you're listening, and make sure to follow Behind the Shadows podcast on Instagram for more behind-the-scenes content. And tune in live every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific on the What We Do in the Shadows subreddit for an AMA with Harvey and special guests. Breathing is so overwhelming Heartbeats are a hassle Tell me why would anyone want to be alive Death might have a reputation Before she arrives But trust me, we have way more fun In the afterlife We have way more fun In the afterlife See you next week Heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh